Hello everyone, I'm Rick Jensen. Welcome to my fly bench. As anyone who has ever pumped the throat of a trout between the months of, say, April and June, you will note that coronamids make up the majority of bugs down there. And out of those, black shows up the most often. So it pays to have a variety of black coronamids in your fly box in a variety of sizes. The one I'm tying up today is one of my favorites I rely on regularly. I call it the Velvet Tuxedo. Let's take a look at the materials you're going to need to tie it. Okay everyone, in the device I've got a Togans number 10 curved scud hook here to which I've added a 7 64ths brown magic bead with the wide end forward because I'm going to accommodate some gills up here, some yarn gills. So we've got the thread started here at the head of the fly and then uh, cut off the tag in and bring in our yarn gills. Now there's times I like to do these with gills and without. I've tied this fly with the white bead for murkier water. When you've got water that's a little bit colored, uh, the white bead seems to draw the fish in better than a little set of white gills. But then sometimes in more clear water, the, uh, the white bead can put the fish off and then I want the brown magic bead. And in gin clear water, I'll often go without the gills even and uh, just go with the brown magic bead because the white can often uh, put them off. It's just too bright. And so uh, we'll just get some thread, more thread on there. A couple wraps in front as you saw just to, to lift those gills up a little bit, cock them up a little bit. I like to get the bead snug on this thread base here, on the yarn base. I like to feel it stick in place. So we're gonna whip finish that now that the bead seems to fit. Have a fit there. And I'm going to cut that thread off and bring the uh, bead forward again. There we go. Snap it into place. Now we'll reattach our 70 denier brown tying thread. I'm going with brown because I wanted it to match the, uh, match the bead. Um, black would be equally suitable. You could do black quite easily. Now with the two wires I'm using extra small black and copper. I like to bring them in at the same time. I have to get a grip of the copper one there. There we go. The extra small is always a challenge to, to A, find when you put it down on the table and then B, hard to, to see when you're handling it. There, I just dropped it there. Trying to get the two ends uh, matching here because I like to tie them in at the same time. It just helps when you're ribbing if they've gone in at the same time and it helps to keep the bulk down here at the uh, thorax of the fly. I mean it is the area where you've got some tolerance but uh, you can also get a too big a shoulder on there and tying them in separately tends to uh, you, you're flirting with that getting a shoulder that's just too big. So there we go I've got the two wires going down the down the shank of the hook there and we'll just bring that down into to the bend and I've tied this fly down at 16's um, and uh, smaller, but I prefer my most common um, sizes are 16, 14, 12. So now the uh, black holographic tinsel comes in. This is the same tinsel used on the zucchini, but now we don't have the tag end of the red on there, and we've got the double rib this time. So it's it is a different fly. It tends to uh, present more on uh, more on the black side with the green blue highlights than on the uh, zucchini side. Um, so it is a different fly. It's the way the uh, the ribs contrast with the body and, and react with it that uh, tends to bring out different highlights in it in that tinsel. 
So I like to bring the uh, wires forward as in my other chronon patterns because I want to get a nice little taper here on the, just trying to lift that copper wire, taper on the butt end. And we'll get uh, a few wraps of this black holographic tinsel back here just to give it that nice taper. And then we move our fire wire forward, our fire forward, you know, wire forward. And uh, just now cover that body, the thread body, with the black holographic tinsel. You can see it's such a, a rich, lustrous black. that it And it has highlights of uh, green and blue and violet in there. Uh, number of colors in the spectrum that are visible at different depths in the water. And uh, we'll just get that secured and caught there at the front of the hook. Yeah, just behind the bead. It's a pretty simple fly to tie, so it's easy to tie a lot of them in a short period of time. And like I said, I tie them some with the white bead for murkier water. Now I'm going to bring the two wires together forward as a rib, as a single unit. One, two, three, four, and five. And if they ever threaten to separate as you're wrapping them forward, you can just unwind that and rewrap and lay it down. They usually come together nicely. Uh, the the uh, extra small wire is usually quite forgiving that way. And we'll just get that well trapped in there before we helicopter it out. And that, what I like to do is I put some tension on the thread and now I've got, because i got two wires, and give it a helicopter and they both come off about usually at the same time. There we go. Yep, popped them both off. Now we'll give that a whip finish. We've got a shoulder there that's about the right taper already. I've got some errant strands of wool, but we'll deal with those in a second. So we get that uh, cut off. Now I'm going to bring my gills back and cut it just behind the bead there as I'm holding it. Just behind the bead usually gives it the right length when you're using the yarn. And now we look for those errant strands. And of course UV light will reveal those as well when we shine the UV light on there. I'll try to tidy it up a little. My UV clear fly finish and flow my favorite resin. And we'll give a just a drop along that body. Make sure it's thoroughly covered. Take the bodkin and spread it around and get a nice smooth tapered body on there. I see some errant fibers there now. And uh, just try to make sure I get all sides of that covered up. Top, bottom, both sides, right and left side. And then the UV light. One, two, three, four, five. I like to give it about 10 seconds per top and bottom. Eight, nine, ten, and then the bottom as well. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then five seconds to each side. And three. That's a great little pattern. I rely on this one when the blacks, uh, black chronometer coming off. It it can also be useful for uh, for uh, when there's chromies uh, because it glitters so nicely when they're taking the chromie stage of the black black chronomen. So uh, there we go, just uh, because the UV light highlights the straggly ends of the, the yarn, it's a useful little tool to use when you're cleaning up, up there. And I just like to clean up any of those loose yarn strands that don't belong. Just being a little on the fussy side. So I'm uh, wishing you good luck and tight lines this season out there. It's uh, looking to be a, a more usual spring this year. Ice off is coming a little later than it has the last couple of years. And uh, so things should be a little bit more predictable, although there are other factors to play with. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please consider sharing it with a friend and uh, subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And uh, like, like I said, tight lines, good luck, and thank you for watching.